A railgun is a device that uses electromagnetic force to launch high-velocity projectiles, by means of a sliding armature that is accelerated along a pair of conductive rails. It is typically constructed as a weapon, and the projectile normally does not contain explosives, instead relying on the projectile's high speed to inflict damage. The railgun uses a pair of parallel conductors rails, along which a sliding armature is accelerated by the electromagnetic effects of a current that flows down one rail, into the armature and then back along the other rail. It is based on principles similar to those of the homopolar motor. As of 2018, railguns have been researched as weapons utilizing electromagnetic forces to impart a very high kinetic energy to a projectile, e.g., APFSDS, rather than using conventional propellants. While explosive-powered military guns cannot readily achieve a muzzle velocity of more than approximately 2 km per second, railguns can readily exceed 3 km per second. For a similar projectile, the range of railguns may exceed that of conventional guns. The destructive force of a projectile depends on its kinetic energy at the point of impact and due to the potentially high velocity of a railgun-launched projectile, their destructive force may be much greater than conventionally launched projectiles of the same size. The absence of explosive propellants or warheads to store and handle, as well as the low cost of projectiles compared to conventional weaponry, come as additional advantages. Notwithstanding the above advantages, railguns are still very much at the research stage, and it remains to be seen whether or not railguns will ever be deployed as practical military weapons. Any trade-off analysis between electromagnetic M propulsion systems and chemical propellants for weapons applications must also factor in the novelty and complexity of the pulse power supplies that are needed for electromagnetic launcher systems. In addition to military applications, NASA has proposed to use a railgun to launch wedge-shaped aircraft with scramjets to high altitude at Mach 10, where they will then fire a small payload into orbit using conventional rocket propulsion. The extreme G-forces involved with direct railgun ground launch to space may restrict the usage to only the sturdiest of payloads. Alternatively, very long rail systems may be used to reduce the required launch acceleration. Topic. Basics The railgun in its simplest form differs from a traditional electric motor in that no use is made of additional field windings or permanent magnets. This basic configuration is formed by a single loop of current and thus requires high currents e.g., of order 1 million amperes to produce sufficient accelerations and muzzle velocities. A relatively common variant of this configuration is the augmented railgun in which the driving current is channeled through additional pairs of parallel conductors, arranged to increase augment the magnetic field experienced by the moving armature. These arrangements reduce the current required for a given acceleration. In electric motor terminology, augmented railguns are usually series wound configurations. Some railguns also use strong neodymium magnets with the field perpendicular to the current flow to increase the force on the projectile. The armature may be an integral part of the projectile, but it may also be configured to accelerate a separate, electrically isolated or non-conducting projectile. Solid, metallic sliding conductors are often the preferred form of railgun armature but plasma or hybrid. Armatures can also be used. A plasma armature is formed by an arc of ionized gas that is used to push a solid, non-conducting payload in a similar manner to the propellant gas pressure in a conventional gun. A hybrid armature uses a pair of plasma contacts to interface a metallic armature to the gun rails. Solid armatures may also transition. Into hybrid armatures, typically after a particular velocity threshold is exceeded. A railgun requires a pulsed DC power supply. 
For potential military applications, railguns are usually of interest because they can achieve much greater muzzle velocities than guns powered by conventional chemical propellants. Increased muzzle velocities with better aerodynamically streamlined projectiles can convey the benefits of increased firing ranges while, in terms of target effects, increased terminal velocities can allow the use of kinetic energy rounds incorporating hit-to-kill guidance, as replacements for explosive shells. Therefore, typical military railgun designs aim for muzzle velocities in the range of 2,000 to 3,500 meters per second with muzzle energies of 5 to 50 megajoules. MJ. For comparison, 50 megajoules is equivalent to the kinetic energy of a school bus weighing 5 metric tons, traveling at 509 kilometers per hour, 316 miles per hour. For single-loop railguns, these mission requirements require launch currents of a few million amperes, so a typical railgun power supply might be designed to deliver a launch current of 5 mA for a few milliseconds. As the magnetic field strengths required for such launches will typically be approximately 10 Tesla 100 kg, most contemporary railgun designs are effectively air-cored i.e., they do not use ferromagnetic materials such as iron to enhance the magnetic flux. However, if the barrel is made of a magnetically permeable material, the magnetic field strength increases due to the increase in permeability mu equals mu zero asterisk mu r, where mu is the effective permeability, mu zero is the permeability constant and mu r is the relative permeability of the barrel. This automatically increases the force. Railgun velocities generally fall within the range of those achievable by two-stage light gas guns, however, the latter are generally only considered to be suitable for laboratory use, while railguns are judged to offer some potential prospects for development as military weapons. Another light gas gun, the combustion light gas gun in a 155 mm prototype form was projected to achieve 2,500 m per second with a .70 caliber barrel. In some hypervelocity research projects, projectiles are pre-injected into railguns, to avoid the need for a standing start, and both two-stage light gas guns and conventional powder guns have been used for this role. In principle, if railgun power supply technology can be developed to provide safe, compact, reliable, combat survivable, and lightweight units, then the total system volume and mass needed to accommodate such a power supply and its primary fuel can become less than the required total volume and mass for a mission equivalent quantity of conventional propellants and explosive ammunition. Arguably such technology has been matured with the introduction of the Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System EMALS, albeit that railguns require much higher system powers, because roughly similar energies must be delivered in a few milliseconds, as opposed to a few seconds. Such a development would then convey a further military advantage in that the elimination of explosives from any military weapons platform will decrease its vulnerability to enemy fire. Topic. History The earliest electromagnetic gun developed was the coil gun. Its development reportedly started in 1845. The first patent was awarded to Professor Christian Birkeland of the University of Christiania today Oslo. He accelerated a 500 grams projectile to 50 meters per second. In 1918, French inventor Louis Octave Fourchon Vilpli created an electric cannon. He filed for a U.S. patent on 1 April 1919, which was issued in July 1922 as patent No. 1,421,435. Electric apparatus for propelling projectiles. In his device, two parallel bus bars are connected by the wings of a projectile, and the whole apparatus surrounded by a magnetic field. 
By passing current through bus bars and projectile, a force is induced which propels the projectile along the bus bars and into flight. In 1944, during World War II, Joachim Hansler of Germany's Ordnance Office proposed the first theoretically viable railgun. By late 1944, the theory behind his electric anti-aircraft gun had been worked out sufficiently to allow the Luftwaffe's Flak Command to issue a specification, which demanded a muzzle velocity of 2,000 meters per second, 6,600 feet per second, and a projectile containing 0.5 kilograms, 1.1 pounds, of explosive. The guns were to be mounted in batteries of six firing 12 rounds per minute, and it was to fit existing 12.8 cm flak 40 mounts. It was never built. When details were discovered after the war it aroused much interest and a more detailed study was done, culminating with a 1947 report which concluded that it was theoretically feasible, but that each gun would need enough power to illuminate half of Chicago. During 1950, Sir Mark Oliphant, an Australian physicist and first director of the Research School of Physical Sciences at the New Australian National University, initiated the design and construction of the world's largest 500 megajoule homopolar generator. This machine was operational from 1962 and was later used to power a large-scale railgun that was used as a scientific experiment. Since 1993 the British and American governments have collaborated on a railgun project at the Dundrennan Weapons Testing Center that culminated in the 2010 test where Bay Systems fired a 3.2 kilograms 7 pound projectile at 33 megajoules. In 1994, India's DRDO's Armament Research and Development Establishment developed a railgun with a 240 kJ, low inductance capacitor bank operating at 5 kV power able to launch projectiles of 3 to 3.5 grams weight to a velocity of more than 2.00 km per second. In 2010, the United States Navy tested a Bay Systems designed compact sized railgun for ship emplacement that accelerated a 3.2 kg. 7 pound projectile to hypersonic velocities of approximately 2.4 km per second, 8600 km per hour or about Mach 7 with 33 megajoules of kinetic energy. It was the first time in history that such levels of performance were reached. They gave the project the motto Velocitas eradico, Latin for I who am speed eradicate or in the vernacular, speed kills. An earlier railgun of the same design 32 megajoules resides at the Dundrennan Weapons Testing Center in the United Kingdom. Low power, small scale railguns have also made popular college and amateur projects. Several amateurs actively carry out research on railguns, examples can be found on YouTube. Topic Design Topic Theory A railgun consists of two parallel metal rails, hence the name. At one end, these rails are connected to an electrical power supply to form the breech end of the gun. Then, if a conductive projectile is inserted between the rails, e.g. by insertion into the breech, it completes the circuit. Electrons flow from the negative terminal of the power supply up the negative rail, across the projectile, and down the positive rail, back to the power supply. This current makes the railgun behave as an electromagnet, creating a magnetic field inside the loop formed by the length of the rails up to the position of the armature. In accordance with the right-hand rule, the magnetic field circulates around each conductor. Since the current is in the opposite direction along each rail, the net magnetic field between the rails B, is directed at right angles to the plane formed by the central axes of the rails and the armature. 
In combination to all with the current I in the armature, this produces a Lorentz force which accelerates the projectile along the rails, always out of the loop, regardless of supply polarity, and away from the power supply, towards the muzzle end of the rails. There are also Lorentz forces acting on the rails and attempting to push them apart, but since the rails are mounted firmly, they cannot move. By definition, if a current of 1 ampere flows in a pair of ideal infinitely long parallel conductors that are separated by a distance of 1 meter, then the magnitude of the force on each meter of those conductors will be exactly 0.2 micronewtons. Furthermore, in general, the force will be proportional to the square of the magnitude of the current and inversely proportional to the distance between the conductors. It also follows that, for railguns with projectile masses of a few kilogram and barrel lengths of a few m, very large currents will be required to accelerate projectiles to velocities of the order of 1,000 meters per second. A very large power supply, providing on the order of 1 million amperes of current, will create a tremendous force on the projectile, accelerating it to a speed of many kilometers per second, kilometer per second. Although these speeds are possible, the heat generated from the propulsion of the object is enough to erode the rails rapidly. Under high-use conditions, current railguns would require frequent replacement of the rails, or to use a heat-resistant material that would be conductive enough to produce the same effect. At this time it is generally acknowledged that it will take major breakthroughs in materials science and related disciplines to produce high-powered railguns capable of firing more than a few shots from a single set of rails. The barrel must withstand these conditions for up to several rounds per minute for thousands of shots without failure or significant degradation. These parameters are well beyond the state of the art in materials science. Topic. Mathematical formula This section presents some elementary analysis of the fundamental theoretical electromagnetic principles that govern the mechanics of railguns. If a railgun were to provide a uniform magnetic field of strength B display style B oriented at right angles to both the armature and the bore axis then with an armature current i display style i and an armature length display style bold symbol l the force f display style f accelerating the projectile would be given by the formula f equals I times B display style bold symbol F equals I bold symbol L times bold symbol B. Here the force, current, and field are all treated as vectors, so the above vector cross product gives a force directed along the bore axis, acting on the current in the armature, as a consequence of the magnetic field. In most simple railguns, the magnetic field B display style B is only provided by the current flowing in the rails i.e. behind the armature it follows that the magnetic field will neither be constant nor spatially uniform hence in practice the force must be calculated after making due allowances for the spatial variation of the magnetic field over the volume of the armature to illustrate the principles involved, it can be useful to consider the rails and the armature as thin wires or filaments. With this approximation, the magnitude of the force vector can be determined from a form of the bio savart law and a result of the Lorentz force. The force can be derived mathematically in terms of the permeability constant mu 0 display style mu underscore 0 the radius of the rails which are assumed to be circular in cross section r display style r the distance between the central axes of the rails d display style d and the current i 
display style i as described below. First, it can be shown from the bio savar law that at one end of a semi-infinite current carrying wire, the magnetic field at a given perpendicular distance s display style s from the end of the wire is given by b s equals mu 0 i 4 pi s phi caret display style math bf b s equals frac mu underscore 0 i 4 pi s wide hat var phi Note this is if the wire runs from the location of the armature e.g. from x equals 0 back to x equals minus infinity display style x equals inf t and s display style s is measured relative to the axis of the wire so, if the armature connects the ends of two such semi-infinite wires separated by a distance d, display style d, a fairly good approximation, assuming the length of the wires is much larger than d, display style d, the total field from both wires at any point on the armature is b s equals mu 0 i 4 pi 1 s plus 1 d minus s z caret Display style math bf b s equals frac mu underscore zero i four pi left frac one s plus frac one d s right wide hat z where s display style s is the perpendicular distance from the point on the armature to the axis of one of the wires. Note that phi caret display style wide hat bar phi between the rails is z caret display style wide hat z assuming the rails are lying in the xy plane and run from x equals 0 back to x equals minus infinity display style x equals inf t as suggested above. Next, to evaluate the force on the armature, the above expression for the magnetic field on the armature can be used in conjunction with the Lorentz force law. F equals I D times B S Display style math bf f equals i int mathrm d bold symbol l times math bf b s to give the force as f equals i r d minus r d times mu zero i 4 pi 1 s plus 1 d minus s z caret equals mu 0 pi 2 2 pi Lane D minus R R X carrot 
Display style Math BF F equals I int underscore R carrot DR Mathrum D Vold symbol L times frac mu underscore zero I four pi left frac one S plus frac one DS right white hat Z equals frac mu underscore zero I carrot two two pi lane left frac DR R right white hat X this shows that the force will be proportional to the product of mu zero display style mu underscore zero and the square of the current i display style i because the value of mu zero is small, four pi times ten minus seven h per meter, it follows that powerful railguns need large driving currents. The above formula is based on the assumption that the distance L display style L between the point where the force F display style F is measured and the beginning of the rails is greater than the separation of the rails D display style D by a factor of about 3 or 4 L greater than 3 d display style l greater than 3 d some other simplifying assumptions have also been made to describe the force more accurately the geometry of the rails and the projectile must be considered with most practical railgun geometries it is not easy to produce an electromagnetic expression for the railgun force that is both simple and reasonably accurate for a more workable simple model, a useful alternative is to use a lump circuit model, to describe the relationship between the driving current and the railgun force. In these models the railgun is modeled on an electrical circuit and the driving force can be determined from the energy flow in the circuit. The voltage across the railgun breach is given by V equals D L I D T plus I R display style V equals frac mathrum D L I mathrum D T plus I R. So the total power flowing into the railgun is then simply the product V I display style V. This power represents an energy flow into three main forms, kinetic energy in the projectile and armature, energy stored in the magnetic field B, display style B, and energy lost via electrical resistance heating of the rails and armature. As the projectile travels along the barrel, the distance from the breach to the armature increases. Hence the resistance and inductance of the barrel also increase. For a simple model, the barrel resistance and inductance can be assumed to vary as linear functions of the projectile position, x, display style x, so these quantities are modeled as r equals r, x l equals l, x, display style, begin, aligned, r and equals r, l and equals lex, end, aligned, where r, display style r, is the resistance per unit length and l, display style l, is the inductance per unit length, or the inductance gradient. It follows that D L I D T equals I D L D T plus L D I D T equals L I D X D T plus L X D I D T equals I L V plus L X D I D T 
Display style frac mathrum d l i mathrum d t equals i frac mathrum d l mathrum d t plus l frac mathrum d i mathrum d t equals li frac mathrum d x mathrum d t plus lex frac mathrum d i mathrum d t equals i of plus lex frac mathrum d i mathrum d t where D X D T display style mathrm D X mathrm D T is the all important projectile velocity V display style V then V equals I L V plus L X D I D T plus I R X equals I L V plus R X plus L X D I D T Display style V equals ill of plus lex frac mathrm D I mathrm D T plus R equals I left Levy plus R right plus lex frac mathrm D I mathrm D T Now if the driving current is held constant the D I D T display style mathrm D I mathrm D T term will be zero. Resistive losses now correspond to a power flow I two R X display style I carrot two R while the power flow I two L V display style I carrot two V represents the electromagnetic work done. This simple model predicts that exactly half of the electromagnetic work will be used to store energy in the magnetic field along the barrel. L X I two two Display style the she carrot two two as the length of the current loop increases. The other half of the electromagnetic work represents the more useful power flow into the kinetic energy of the projectile. Since power can be expressed as force times speed, this shows the force on the railgun armature is given by F equals L I. 2 2 display style f equals frac li carrot 2 2 this equation also shows that high accelerations will require very high currents for an ideal square bore single turn railgun the value of l display style l would be about 0.6 microhenries per meter, microhenry per meter, but most practical railgun barrels exhibit lower values of L display style L than this. Maximizing the inductance gradient is but one of the challenges faced by the designers of railgun barrels. Since the lump circuit model describes the railgun force in terms of fairly normal circuit equations, it becomes possible to specify a simple time domain model of a railgun. 5YG Ignoring friction and air drag, the projectile acceleration is given by d v d t equals l I two two M display style frac mathrm d v mathrm d t equals frac li carrot two two meters, 
where m is the projectile mass. The motion along the barrel is given by d x d t equals v display style frac mathrm d x mathrm d t equals v and the above voltage and current terms can be placed into appropriate circuit equations to determine the time variation of current and voltage. It can also be noted that the textbook formula for the high frequency inductance per unit length of a pair of parallel round wires, of radius r and axial separation d is L equals mu 0 pi lane d minus r r display style l equals frac mu underscore 0 pi lane left frac dr r right so the lump parameter model also predicts the force for this case as f equals l i 2 2 equals mu 0 i 2 2 pi lane d minus r r Display style f equals frac li carrot two two equals frac mu underscore zero i carrot two two pi lane left frac dr r right. With practical railgun geometries, much more accurate two or three dimensional models of the rail and armature current distributions and the associated forces can be computed, e.g., by using finite element methods to solve formulations based on either the scalar magnetic potential or the magnetic vector potential. Topic: Design considerations. The power supply must be able to deliver large currents, sustained and controlled over a useful amount of time. The most important gauge of power supply effectiveness is the energy it can deliver. As of December 2010, the greatest known energy used to propel a projectile from a railgun was 33 megajoules. The most common forms of power supplies used in railguns are capacitors and compulsators which are slowly charged from other continuous energy sources. The rails need to withstand enormous repulsive forces during shooting, and these forces will tend to push them apart and away from the projectile. As rail projectile clearances increase, arcing develops, which causes rapid vaporization and extensive damage to the rail surfaces and the insulator surfaces. This limited some early research railguns to one shot per service interval. The inductance and resistance of the rails and power supply limit the efficiency of a railgun design. Currently different rail shapes and railgun configurations are being tested, most notably by the U.S. Navy, Naval Research Laboratory, the Institute for Advanced Technology at the University of Texas at Austin, and Bay Systems. Topic. Materials used The rails and projectiles must be built from strong conductive materials, the rails need to survive the violence of an accelerating projectile, and heating due to the large currents and friction involved. Some erroneous work has suggested that the recoil force in railguns can be redirected or eliminated. Careful theoretical and experimental analysis reveals that the recoil force acts on the breech closure just as in a chemical firearm. The rails also repel themselves via a sideways force caused by the rails being pushed by the magnetic field, just as the projectile is. The rails need to survive this without bending and must be very securely mounted. 
Currently published material suggests that major advances in material science must be made before rails can be developed that allow railguns to fire more than a few full power shots before replacement of the rails is required. <laughs> Heat dissipation In current designs massive amounts of heat are created by the electricity flowing through the rails, as well as by the friction of the projectile leaving the device. This causes three main problems, melting of equipment, decreased safety of personnel, and detection by enemy forces due to increased infrared signature. As briefly discussed above, the stresses involved in firing this sort of device require an extremely heat-resistant material. Otherwise the rails, barrel, and all equipment attached would melt or be irreparably damaged. In practice, the rails used with most railgun designs are subject to erosion from each launch. Additionally, projectiles can be subject to some degree of ablation, and this can limit railgun life, in some cases severely. Topic. Applications. Railguns have a number of potential practical applications, primarily for the military. However, there are other theoretical applications currently being researched. Topic. Launch or launch assist of spacecraft Electrodynamic assistance to launch rockets has been studied. Space applications of this technology would likely involve specially formed electromagnetic coils and superconducting magnets. Composite materials would likely be used for this application. For space launches from Earth, relatively short acceleration distances, less than a few kilometer, would require very strong acceleration forces, higher than humans can tolerate. Other designs include a longer helical spiral track, or a large ring design whereby a space vehicle would circle the ring numerous times, gradually gaining speed, before being released into a launch corridor leading skyward. Nevertheless, if technically feasible and cost-effective to build, imparting hypervelocity escape velocity to a projectile launching at sea level, where the atmosphere is the most dense, may result in much of the launch velocity being lost to aerodynamic drag. In addition, the projectile might still require some form of onboard guidance and control to realize a useful orbital insertion angle that may not be achievable based simply on the launcher's upward elevation angle relative to the surface of the Earth. See practical considerations of escape velocity. In 2003, Ian McNabb outlined a plan to turn this idea into a realized technology. Because of strong acceleration, this system would launch only sturdy materials, such as food, water, and, most importantly, fuel. Under ideal circumstances, equator, mountain, heading east, the system would cost $528 per kilogram, compared with $5,000 per kilogram on the conventional rocket. The McNabb railgun could make approximately 2,000 launches per year, for a total of maximum 500 tons launched per year. Because the launch track would be 1.6 kilometers long, power will be supplied by a distributed network of 100 rotating machines compulsator, spread along the track. Each machine would have a 3.3-ton carbon fiber rotor spinning at high speeds. A machine can recharge in a matter of hours using 10 megawatts power. This machine could be supplied by a dedicated generator. The total launch package would weigh almost 1.4 tons. Payload per launch in these conditions is over 400 kg. There would be a peak operating magnetic field of 5 T. Half of this coming from the rails, and the other half from augmenting magnets. This halves the required current through the rails, which reduces the power fourfold. Topic. Weaponry 
Railguns are being researched as weapons with projectiles that do not contain explosives or propellants, but are given extremely high velocities, 2,500 meters per second, 8,200 feet per second, approximately Mach 7 at sea level or more. For comparison, the M16 rifle has a muzzle speed of 930 meters per second, 3,050 feet per second, and the 16. 50 caliber Mark 7 gun that armed World War II American battleships has a muzzle speed of 760 meters per second, 2490 feet per second, which because of its much greater projectile mass, up to 2700 pounds, generated a muzzle energy of 360 megajoules and a downrange kinetic impact of energy of over 160 megajoules. See also Project Harp. By firing smaller projectiles at extremely high velocities, railguns may yield kinetic energy impacts equal or superior to the destructive energy of 5 inches. 54 caliber Mark 45 gun naval guns, which achieve up to 10 MJ at the muzzle, but with greater range. This decreases ammunition size and weight, allowing more ammunition to be carried and eliminating the hazards of carrying explosives or propellants in a tank or naval weapons platform. Also, by firing more aerodynamically streamlined projectiles at greater velocities, railguns may achieve greater range, less time to target, and at shorter ranges less wind drift, bypassing the physical limitations of conventional firearms. The limits of gas expansion prohibit launching an unassisted projectile to velocities greater than about 1.5 km per second and ranges of more than 50 miles 80 km from a practical conventional gun system. Current railgun technologies necessitate a long and heavy barrel, but a railgun's ballistics far outperform conventional cannons of equal barrel lengths. Railguns can also deliver area of effect damage by detonating a bursting charge in the projectile which unleashes a swarm of smaller projectiles over a large area, assuming that the many technical challenges facing fieldable railguns are overcome, including issues like railgun projectile guidance, rail endurance, and combat survivability and reliability of the electrical power supply. The increased launch velocities of railguns may provide advantages over more conventional guns for a variety of offensive and defensive scenarios. Railguns have limited potential to be used against both surface and airborne targets. The first weaponized railgun planned for production, the General Atomics Blitzer system, began full system testing in September 2010. The weapon launches a streamlined discarding Sabo round designed by Boeing's Phantom Works at 1,600 meters per second, 5,200 feet per second, approximately Mach 5, with accelerations exceeding 60,000 gn. During one of the tests, the projectile was able to travel an additional 7 kilometers (4.3 miles) downrange after penetrating a 1/8 inch (3.2 millimeters) thick steel plate. The company hopes to have an integrated demo of the system by 2016 followed by production by 2019, pending funding. Thus far, the project is self funded. In October 2013, General Atomics unveiled a land based version of the Blitzer railgun. A company official claimed the gun could be ready for production in two to three years. Railguns are being examined for use as anti-aircraft weapons to intercept air threats, particularly anti-ship cruise missiles, in addition to land bombardment. A supersonic sea-skimming anti-ship missile can appear over the horizon 20 miles from a warship, leaving a very short reaction time for a ship to intercept it. Even if conventional defense systems react fast enough, they are expensive and only a limited number of large interceptors can be carried. A railgun projectile can reach several times the speed of sound faster than a missile, because of this, it can hit a target, such as a cruise missile, much faster and farther away from the ship. 
Projectiles are also typically much cheaper and smaller, allowing for many more to be carried they have no guidance systems, and rely on the railgun to supply their kinetic energy, rather than providing it themselves. The speed, cost, and numerical advantages of railgun systems may allow them to replace several different systems in the current layered defense approach. A railgun projectile without the ability to change course can hit fast-moving missiles at a maximum range of 30 nmi 35 miles, 56 km. As is the case with the Phalanx CIWS, unguided railgun rounds will require multiple, many shots to bring down maneuvering supersonic anti-ship missiles, with the odds of hitting the missile improving dramatically the closer it gets. The Navy plans for railguns to be able to intercept endo-atmospheric ballistic missiles, stealthy air threats, supersonic missiles, and swarming surface threats. A prototype system for supporting interception tasks is to be ready by 2018, and operational by 2025. This time frame suggests the weapons are planned to be installed on the Navy's next-generation surface combatants, expected to start construction by 2028. Bay Systems was at one point interested in installing railguns on their future combat systems manned ground vehicles. This program was the U.S. Army's third attempt to replace the aging M2 Bradley. India has successfully tested their own railgun. Russia, China, and Turkey's defense company ASELSAN are also developing railguns. Helical railgun Helical railguns are multi-turn railguns that reduce rail and brush current by a factor equal to the number of turns. Two rails are surrounded by a helical barrel and the projectile or reusable carrier is also helical. The projectile is energized continuously by two brushes sliding along the rails, and two or more additional brushes on the projectile serve to energize and commute several windings of the helical barrel direction in front of and or behind the projectile. The helical railgun is a cross between a railgun and a coilgun. They do not currently exist in a practical, usable form. A helical railgun was built at MIT in 1980 and was powered by several banks of, for the time, large capacitors approximately 4 farads. It was about 3 meters long, consisting of 2 meters of accelerating coil and 1 meter of decelerating coil. It was able to launch a glider or projectile about 500 meters. Topic. Plasma railgun A plasma railgun is a linear accelerator and a plasma energy weapon which, like a projectile railgun, uses two long parallel electrodes to accelerate a sliding short armature. However, in a plasma railgun, the armature and ejected projectile consists of plasma, or hot, ionized, gas-like particles, instead of a solid slug of material. Marauder magnetically accelerated ring to achieve ultra-high directed energy and radiation is, or was, a United States Air Force Research Laboratory project concerning the development of a coaxial plasma railgun. It is one of several United States government efforts to develop plasma-based projectiles. The first computer simulations occurred in 1990, and its first published experiment appeared on August 1, 1993. As of 1993 the project appeared to be in the early experimental stages. The weapon was able to produce donut-shaped rings of plasma and balls of lightning that exploded with devastating effects when hitting their target. The project's initial success led to it becoming classified, and only a few references to Marauder appeared after 1993. The project may or may not have been scrapped some time after 1995. Topic. Tests Full-scale models have been built and fired, including a 90mm bore, 9 megajoule kinetic energy gun developed by the USDARPA. 
Rail and insulator wear problems still need to be solved before railguns can start to replace conventional weapons. Probably the oldest consistently successful system was built by the UK's Defence Research Agency at Dundrennan Range in Kakubri, Scotland. This system was established in 1993 and has been operated for over 10 years. The Yugoslavian Military Technology Institute developed, within a project named Edo Zero, a railgun with 7 kJ kinetic energy, in 1985. In 1987 a successor was created, Project Edo-1, that used projectile with a mass of 0.7 kg and achieved speeds of 3,000 m per second, 9, feet per second and with a mass of 1.1 kg reached speeds of 2,400 m per second, 7, feet per second. It used a track length of 0.7 meters, 2.3 feet. According to those working on it, with other modifications, it was able to achieve a speed of 4,500 meters per second, 14,800 feet per second. The aim was to achieve projectile speed of 7,000 meters per second, 23,000 feet per second. China is now one of the major players in electromagnetic launches. In 2012 it hosted the 16th International Symposium on Electromagnetic Launch Technology EML 2012 at Beijing. Satellite imagery in late 2010 suggested that tests were being conducted at an armor and artillery range near Baoto, in the Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region. Topic. United States Armed Forces In 2007 the United States military was funding railgun experiments. At the University of Texas at Austin Center for Electromechanics, military railguns capable of delivering tungsten armor piercing bullets with kinetic energies of 9 megajoules, 9 megajoules have been developed. 9 megajoules is enough energy to deliver 2 kilograms 4.4 pounds of projectile at 3 kilometers per second 1.9 miles per second at that velocity a sufficiently long rod of tungsten or another dense metal could easily penetrate a tank and potentially pass through it CAPFSDS topic Naval Surface Warfare Center Dahlgren Division The United States Naval Surface Warfare Center Dahlgren Division demonstrated an 8 MJ railgun firing 3.2 kg projectiles in October 2006 as a prototype of a 64 MJ weapon to be deployed aboard Navy warships. The main problem the U.S. Navy has had with implementing a railgun cannon system is that the guns wear out due to the immense pressures, stresses and heat that are generated by the millions of amperes of current necessary to fire projectiles with megajoules of energy. While not nearly as powerful as a cruise missile like a BGM-109 Tomahawk, that will deliver 3,000 megajoules of destructive energy to a target, such weapons would, in theory, allow the Navy to deliver more granular firepower at a fraction of the cost of a missile, and will be much harder to shoot down versus future defensive systems. For context, another relevant comparison is the Rheinmetall 120mm gun used on main battle tanks, which generates 9 megajoules of muzzle energy. In 2007 Bay Systems delivered a 32 megajoules prototype muzzle energy to the U.S. Navy. The same amount of energy is released by the detonation of 4.8 kg of C4. On January 31, 2008, the U.S. Navy tested a railgun that fired a projectile at 10.64 MJ with a muzzle velocity of 2,520 m per second, 8,270 feet per second. 
The power was provided by a new 9 MJ prototype capacitor bank using solid-state switches and high-energy density capacitors delivered in 2007 and an older 3-2 MJ pulse power system from the U.S. Army's Green Farm Electric Gun Research and Development Facility developed in the late 1980s that was previously refurbished by General Atomics Electromagnetic Systems EMS division. It is expected to be ready between 2020 and 2025. A test of a railgun took place on December 10, 2010, by the U.S. Navy at the Naval Surface Warfare Center Dahlgren Division. During the test, the Office of Naval Research set a world record by conducting a 33 megajoules shot from the railgun, which was built by Bay Systems. A test took place in February 2012, at the Naval Surface Warfare Center Dahlgren Division. While similar in energy to the aforementioned test, the railgun used is considerably more compact, with a more conventional-looking barrel. A General Atomics built prototype was delivered for testing in October 2012. In 2014 the U.S. Navy had plans to integrate a railgun that has a range of over 16 kilometers 10 miles onto a ship by 2016. This weapon, while having a form factor more typical of a naval gun, will utilize components largely in common with those developed and demonstrated at Dahlgren. The hypervelocity rounds weigh 10 kilograms, 23 pounds, a 18 in 460 millimeters, and are fired at Mach 7. A future goal is to develop projectiles that are self-guided, a necessary requirement to hit distant targets or intercepting missiles. When the guided rounds are developed, the Navy is projecting each round to cost about $25,000, though it must be noted that developing guided projectiles for guns has a history of doubling or tripling initial cost estimates. Some high-velocity projectiles developed by the Navy have command guidance, but the accuracy of the command guidance is not known, nor even if it can survive a full power shot. Currently, the only U.S. Navy ships that can produce enough electrical power to get desired performance are the two existing, and one under construction as of 2018, Zumwalt-class destroyers DDG-1000 series, they can generate 78 megawatts of power, more than is necessary to power a railgun. Engineers are working to derive technologies developed for the DDG-1000 series ships into a battery system so other warships can operate a railgun. Most current destroyers can spare only 9 megawatts of additional electricity, while it would require 25 megawatts to propel a projectile to the desired maximum range, i.e., to launch 32 megajoules projectiles at a rate of 10 shots per minute. Even if current ships, such as the Arleigh Burke class destroyer, can be upgraded with enough electrical power to operate a railgun, the space taken up on the ships by the integration of an additional weapon system may force the removal of existing weapon systems to make room available. The first shipboard tests was to be from a railgun installed on an Spearhead class expeditionary fast transport EPF, but this was later changed to land-based testing. Though the 23 pounds projectiles have no explosives, their Mach 7 velocity gives them 32 megajoules of energy, but impact kinetic energy downrange will typically be 50% or less of the muzzle energy. The Navy is looking into other uses for railguns, besides land bombardment, such as air defense, with the right targeting systems, projectiles could intercept aircraft, cruise missiles, and even ballistic missiles. The Navy is also developing directed energy weapons for air defense use, but it will be years or decades before they will be effective. The railgun would be part of a Navy fleet that envisions future offensive and defensive capabilities being provided in layers. Lasers to provide close-range defense, railguns to provide medium-range attack and defense, and cruise missiles to provide long-range attack, though railguns will cover targets up to 100 miles away that previously needed a missile. The Navy may eventually enhance railgun technology to enable it to fire at a range of 200 nmi 230 miles 370 kilometers and impact with 64 megajoules of energy. 
One shot would require 6 million amps of current, so it will take a long time to develop capacitors that can generate enough energy and strong enough gun materials. The most promising near term application for weapons rated railguns and electromagnetic guns, in general, is probably aboard naval ships with sufficient spare electrical generating capacity and battery storage space. In exchange, ship survivability may be enhanced through a comparable reduction in the quantities of potentially dangerous chemical propellants and explosives currently employed. Ground combat forces, however, may find that co-locating an additional electrical power supply on the battlefield for every gun system may not be as weight and space efficient, survivable, or convenient a source of immediate projectile launching energy as conventional propellants, which are currently manufactured safely behind the lines and delivered to the weapon, pre-packaged, through a robust and dispersed logistics system. In July, 2017, Defense Tech reported that the Navy wants to push the Office of Naval Research's prototype railgun from a science experiment into useful weapon territory. The goal, according to Tom Bootner, head of Naval Air Warfare and Weapons for the ONR, is 10 shots per minute at 32 megajoules. A 32 megajoule railgun shot is equivalent to about 23,600,000 foot-pounds, so a single 32 megajoule shot has the same muzzle energy as about 200,000.22 rounds being fired simultaneously. The target firing rate, 10 shots per minute, is then equivalent to firing 2,000,000.22 rimfire rounds per minute. In more conventional power units, a 32 megajoules shot every 6s is a net power of 5.3 megawatts or 5300 kilowatts. If the railgun is assumed to be 20% efficient at turning electrical energy into kinetic energy, the ship's electrical supplies will need to provide about 25 megawatts for as long as firing continues. Topic. Army Research Laboratory A new electromagnetic launcher research facility was constructed in 1997 at the Institute for Advanced Technology, IAT. IAT was federated with the Army Research Laboratory ARL, and the University of Texas at Austin UTA, supporting the Army's tactical programs in electric weaponries by conducting long-term research. The Launch Research Facility designed and tested the Cannon Caliber Electromagnetic Gun CCEMG, that same year. The facility provided a power system that included 13 1MJ capacitor banks, an assortment of electromagnetic launcher devices and diagnostic apparatuses. The focus of the research activity was on designs, interactions and materials required for electromagnetic launches. In 1997, UTA's Center for Electromechanics, UTSEM, designed and fabricated a rapid-fire railgun launcher. The launcher had a 30 mm round bore. Rapid fire operation was achieved by driving the launcher with multiple 83,544 peak pulses provided by the CCEMG compulsator. The CCEMG railgun included several features ceramic sidewalls, directional preloading, and liquid cooling. In 2004, ARL researchers published papers examining the interaction of high temperature plasmas for the purpose of developing efficient railgun igniters. Early papers describe the plasma propellant interaction group at ARL and their attempts to understand and distinguish between the chemical, thermal, and radiation effect of plasmas on conventional solid propellants. Using scanning electron microscopy and other diagnostic techniques, they evaluated in detail the influence of plasmas on specific propellant materials. Topic. People's Republic of China China is developing its own railgun system. According to a CNBC report from U.S. intelligence, China's railgun system was first revealed in 2011, and ground testing began in 2014. 
In 2015 when the weapon system gained the ability to strike over extended ranges with increased lethality. The weapon system was successfully mounted on a Chinese Navy ship in December 2017, with sea trials happening later. In early February 2018, pictures of what is claimed to be a Chinese railgun were published online. In the pictures, the gun is mounted on the bow of a Type 072 II class landing ship Haiyangshan. Media suggests that the system is or soon will be ready for testing. In March 2018, it was reported that China confirmed it had begun testing its electromagnetic railgun at sea. Topic: Issues. Topic: Major difficulties. Major technological and operational hurdles must be overcome before railguns can be deployed. Railgun durability. To date, railgun demonstrations, while impressive, have not demonstrated an ability to fire multiple full-power shots from the same set of rails. The Navy has claimed hundreds of shots from the same set of rails. In a March 2014 statement to the Intelligence, Emerging Threats and Capabilities Subcommittee of the House Armed Services Committee, Chief of Naval Research Admiral Matthew Clunder stated, barrel life has increased from tens of shots to over 400, with a program path to achieve 1,000 shots. However, the Office of Naval Research, ONR, will not confirm that the 400 shots are full-power shots. Further there is nothing published to indicate there are any high megajoule class railguns with the capability of firing hundreds of full power shots while staying within the strict operational parameters necessary to fire railgun shots accurately and safely. Railguns should be able to fire six rounds per minute with a rail life of about 3,000 rounds, tolerating launch accelerations of tens of thousands of Gs, extreme pressures and megrampere currents, however this is not feasible with current technology. Projectile guidance, a future capability critical to fielding a real railgun weapon is developing a robust guidance package that will allow the railgun to fire at distant targets or to hit incoming missiles. Developing such a package is a real challenge. The Navy's RFP Navy SBIR 2012.1 Topic N 121-102 for developing such a package gives a good overview of just how challenging railgun projectile guidance is. The package must fit within the mass 5,000 volts per meter, be greater than 2T, and surface temperatures of greater than 800 Dave C. The package should be able to operate in the presence of any plasma that may form in the bore or at the muzzle exit and must also be radiation hardened due to exo-atmospheric flight. Total power consumption must be less than 8 watts threshold, 5 watts objective, and the battery life must be at least 5 minutes from initial launch to enable operation during the entire engagement. In order to be affordable, the production cost per projectile must be as low as possible, with a goal of less than $1,000 per unit. On June 22, 2015, General Atomics Electromagnetic Systems announced that projectiles with onboard electronics survived the whole railgun launch environment and performed their intended functions in four consecutive tests on June 9 and 10 June at the U.S. Army's Dugway Proving Ground in Utah. The onboard electronics successfully measured in bore accelerations and projectile dynamics, for several kilometers downrange, with the integral data link continuing to operate after the projectiles impacted the desert floor, which is essential for precision guidance. Topic. Trigger for inertial confinement fusion Railguns may also be miniaturized for inertial confinement nuclear fusion. Fusion is triggered by very high temperature and pressure at the core. Current technology calls for multiple lasers, usually over 100, to concurrently strike a fuel pellet, creating a symmetrical compressive pressure. Railguns may be able to trigger fusion by firing energetic plasma from multiple directions. 
The process developed involves four key steps. Plasma is pumped into a chamber. When the pressure is great enough, a diaphragm will rupture, sending gas down the rail. Shortly afterwards, a sufficient voltage is applied to the rails, creating a conduction path of ionized gas. This plasma is accelerated down the rail, eventually being ejected at a large velocity. The rails and dimensions are on the order of centimeters. See also <laughs> <laughs>